Hello guys, Abel here, back with another video. First of all, I hope that the lighting is not too unbearably shit. So yeah, in today's video, strength standards, that's gonna be the topic. I'm sure you have seen a lot of these things out there, various charts and tables and articles and videos, which are outlining how strong you should get if you want to have a good physique. And sometimes they are even categorized. Like if you want to have like a good but not amazing physique, you should get to these strength levels. But if you have an amazing physique that is like really turning the heads on the beach, then you should get to these strength levels. And honestly, for the most part, I think these are pretty good. But many times I looked at them and I just thought to myself that A, they are, they are either not realistic or B, I just thought, man, honestly, I just don't think that people have to get that strong on these lifts if they just want to have a good physique or even a pretty great physique for that matter. So what I did is I did some research on my own. Of course, I looked back at my own training journey, but that's just a case study of one. And I did a bit of a survey as well. So what I did is I went through client data, for example. So I went through all the client records I could find in my intake form when someone signs up for coaching. I asked them what their best lifts are on various lifts, such as the bench press, the chin up, the overhead press. I also looked at their progress because sometimes people lie or maybe they just have some fond memories of those good old days when I could bench press three plates for eight reps. Well, at the moment, I can only bench press one plate for six reps, but, but trust me, I was super strong back then. And then when I look at their actual progress, it's like, yeah, well, it's not quite the case. So I went through all of that and I also reached out to a couple of people and asked them like, hey, would you mind telling me what your best lifts are on these? So all in all, I collected over a hundred data points and I put all of that together in a spreadsheet. I'm not going to share it with you here because I have them by name. So uh, it would be kind of inappropriate. But anyway, I basically took an average of what I found and I made three categories for myself. For one, I made a category of they kind of look like they lift. So what that means to me is that the person yeah, you can sort of tell that the person is at least a physically active person. He certainly doesn't look like someone who is not exercising whatsoever. But most people, when they look at them, their first thought would not be, ooh, this guy must be working out, unless they get super, super lean. So if you get to a very low body fat percentage, then you're going to look more so like you lift, no matter how unmuscular you are. But if they are at a more moderate body fat percentage, then possibly most people wouldn't even be able to tell that this person is working out seriously. They would be like, yeah, yeah, he looks like, like a physically active person. He looks healthy, but not like a, a gym rat, you know? And then I have a category that I titled, they look like they lift. So at this point, I would say that the person definitely looks like he lifts. So if he takes his shirt off at the beach, then most people would definitely go, wow, yeah, like this guy is really fit even if they are not super lean. So at this point, you don't have to be 9% body fat or 10% body fat to really turn some heads. At this point, you're probably one of the more muscular people in your gym if you're visiting a regular commercial gym. And you're not going to be an outlier with your physique. So you might not be a super successful Instagram influencer just based on your physique, but you definitely look like someone who lifts and lifts pretty seriously. And then I have a third category for either super advanced people who have been training for a very long time and intelligently or outliers based on their genetics. So at this point, we are talking about people for whom either they are so muscular that basically their physique is their main distinguishing characteristic. It's like, well, if you don't know which guy I'm talking about, you know that super jacked guy. So at this point, you can just look at the person, even if they are fully clothed, they can be wearing a long sleeve shirt and you can just look at the person and go, wow, that guy is clearly working out. I can just see it on his traps and on his shoulders. On Instagram, at this point, they could be a successful influencer just based on their physique. Someone like a Brian Worstein would come to mind here. Or we could also talk about people that are not necessarily that crazy muscular, because maybe they're just genetically not put together that way. And that could be just a function of their limb length and body proportions and things like that. 
but they are at a very advanced level and they are still clearly standing out from the crowd in terms of muscularity, but they are not like at an outlier level necessarily. So I have those three categories and I collected a bunch of people into each three and I looked at their strength levels on various lifts. I took an average at the end of that and basically that's what I want to share with you here. And hopefully by the end of that, we can come to a conclusion and we can see that, okay, if you want to have a physique development level like this, then probably these lifts or strength goals are good ones to shoot for. Now I swear I'm gonna get to these numbers in just a minute, or if you want, you can just skip ahead. I'm gonna timestamp it in the show description or video description, but a few words that I just wanna say on strength standards in general. So the thing that I do like about strength standards is that I think the fundamental thought process behind it is good for the most part. I do think, I not just think, but I think it's just a fact that strength and size generally correlate very, very well almost without fail. I can just look at a person and if they are super impressive and they have a really good physique, usually they are also going to be really, really strong. And the converse is also true for the most part. People that don't really look like they lift, usually they are also pretty weak. Now there are also some negatives about having these standards and one of them is that of course there are exceptions and some people may get disappointed because of this or some people might actually get pleasantly surprised. So what do I mean by that? There are some deceptively strong people relative to how muscular they are. To put it in another way, there are some people that are super, super strong, even though they don't look all that impressive. That really does happen. Basically, that means that just because you reach a certain strength level, it's not going to be a guarantee that you're going to look a certain way. And even more so, it's definitely not a guarantee that just because you get as strong as some person, you're actually going to look like that person. That's definitely not going to be the case because it's not just about muscle size, let alone strength level. It's also about how your muscles insert, how your proportions are, and all of that good jazz. You know, just muscle building genetics on the whole. And then, of course, there are also some deceptively muscular people relative to their strength level. Put it in another way, some people have really impressive physiques, even though they are not as strong as what you would expect, which in practice basically means that you might actually get pleasantly surprised. One day you might look up and go, wow, I actually look amazing and I'm really not that strong. I didn't even get close to these strength standards. These things really do happen. There are exceptions and we have to be aware of that. Now, I would say that when you think about these exceptions, realize that they still fall within a certain range. So you will not see someone with a phenomenal physique looking jacked as hell who gets pinned by an empty bar on the bench press. Okay, so you're not gonna see things like that. And most likely you're also not going to see someone who is strong as hell and doesn't even look like they lift. Usually what we're actually talking about is, wow, this person has a phenomenal physique. Okay, what are their best lifts? Oh, wow, like, yeah, they are strong, but I would have thought they are stronger. Something like that, you know? Another thing that is not so great about having these standards is that it can make people do some funky things with their training. So when people realize that, okay, strength and size correlate pretty well, and this guy, let's say Abel, he said that if I get to these strength levels, then my physique is probably going to be pretty good. Some people will start doing some really funky things with their lifting, either with their lifting technique, just trying to break PRs and get to higher and higher weights no matter what, sacrificing form, technique, and risking injury even, or they will actually start training more like a power lifter and they will start doing things to peak their strength level at a certain time. And that's kind of missing the forest for the trees, or you're confusing the means with the end, or you're confusing the goal with the tool to get to that goal, okay? So the strength levels and the strength standards, they are informative and they do tell you something about where your physique development is going to be at various stages, but that's only going to be the case if you reach these strength levels within the context of a hypertrophy-oriented training program, okay? So if you train for hypertrophy and your training program is set up in that fashion, and you happen to reach these strength levels, then yeah, there is going to be a decent chance that your physique development is going to follow suit. However, if you start training like a power lifter, 
and you start peaking your strength and go through accumulation phases and then tapers and things like that, then yeah, you're basically trying to hack the system. You're not going to fool your muscles that way, okay? So that's also important to keep in mind. And another thing that I don't like about having these standards is that it inherently puts certain movements on a pedestal. So we cannot really have a strength standard for a leg press, okay? Because most people will have leg presses in their gyms, but those leg presses are going to be different. We also can't have a strength standard for a chest press machine because those are going to be different from gym to gym. So we will have to have them on things like barbell movements because everybody will have barbells and basically everybody will have barbells that weigh the same amount. So that's why we will have these strength standards on exercises like the bench press, the overhead press, the chin up, the Romanian deadlift, and the squat. Actually, those are the five lifts on which we are going to measure things. And the thing is, I don't think that you necessarily have to have these movements in your program. A lot of my clients don't have a bunch of these lifts in their routines. You know, a chin up is actually a great movement and whenever I can, I will put that into someone's routine. A Romanian deadlift is another one that I think is going to benefit most people who can do them, but a barbell back squat, I think there are a bunch of movements you could be doing instead. You could use a hex squat machine. There is nothing wrong with some Smith machine squat variant. You could do front squats. You could do Bulgarian split squats, a leg press. I think those are all phenomenal movements. A barbell overhead press, I think it's a great exercise, sure, but there is nothing wrong with doing a dumbbell overhead press or a cable overhead press, which I'm a huge fan of, or maybe not doing any overhead presses at all. There is not necessarily a massive issue with that either. Not to mention the barbell flat bench press, which I think is actually one of the most overrated exercises of all. Uh, it's a decent exercise, sure, but I think that there are better alternatives in many cases because the range of motion is kind of cut short just because of how the movement is set up. So having these standards kind of puts these movements on a pedestal and will make you feel like you have to do them. And in reality, you really don't. So at any rate, I'm going to go into my findings and into what my little research project found here. So once again, three categories kind of look like he lifts. So has an athletic physique, perhaps looks like the person is exercising, but most people will only be able to tell that this person is actually going to the gym regularly if the person is really lean. At a more moderate body fat percentage, they will look healthy and athletic-ish but not like a jacked guy. Then we have this guy looks like he lifts. So at this point, even if you're not super lean, most people will be able to just look at you and tell, yeah, you work out. And then we have advanced or outlier people. So these are people that have been either training for a very long time and intelligently so, or they have like just a super jacked, super impressive physique. And once again, the lifts that we are looking at are the bench press, the overhead press, the chin up, the Romanian deadlift and the squat. And we are looking at each of these for a five rep max, okay? So first of all, the kind of look like he lifts category, the average strength level here was 82 kilograms. Okay, that's for five repetitions. That in pounds would be 180.4 pounds. The biggest outlier that I had here was 105 kilograms or 231 pounds. That's a very decent level of bench pressing strength for five reps. And there was a person who was able to do that and still I had to put him just based on his physique into the kind of look, looks like he lifts category. Okay, so that does happen. And the biggest low liar, I just named it like this, I don't know if that actually makes sense in English, but the weakest person was 60 kilos for five reps or 132 pounds. Okay, so clearly there were big outliers in either direction, but the average was 82 kilograms or 180 pounds. Then in the looks like he lifts category, the average was right around 100 kilograms or 220 pounds. Okay, that for five reps. The biggest outlier I had was 110 kilos. Okay, not that much more than the average. So 242 pounds. And the biggest low liar was 90 kilograms or 198 pounds. Then at the advanced category, the average was 123 kilograms or 270.6 pounds. That for five reps, the biggest outlier was 145 kilos. 
for five reps, not bad at all. And that would be 319 pounds. And the biggest low liar was 105 kilos, which is actually right around the average of the they look like they lift category. Then for the overhead press, for the, yeah, they kind of look like they lift category, the average was 53 kilograms, okay? That's 116.6 pounds. The biggest outlier was 65 kilograms, so that would be 143 pounds. And the weakest person that I found here was 45 kilograms, so that would be 99 pounds. In the they look like they lift, definitely category, the average was 58 kilograms, so not that much more actually. That would be 127.6 pounds. The biggest outlier was 76 kilograms, which is not bad at all. That would be 167.2 pounds. And then the biggest low liar, so the weakest person, was 40 kilos, so 88 pounds. So interesting, actually in the they definitely look like they lift category, the weakest person was actually weaker than the weakest person in the, yeah, they kind of look like they lift category. So there are some weirdnesses that are going on here. You can clearly see that. Then for the advanced category, the average was 75 kilos, right around there, so 165 pounds. The biggest outlier was 86 kilograms for five reps, which is crazy impressive. That would be 189.2 pounds. And then the biggest low liar, so the weakest person, would be 60 kilos, so 132 pounds. Then we have the chin-up for five reps. In the kind of look like they lift category, the average was 16 additional kilos for five reps, okay? So that would be 35.2 pounds. The biggest outlier was 27 kilos, that would be 59.4 pounds. And the weakest person, of course, was zero edit kilos. So it was just body weight for five reps. In the second category, so they definitely look like they lift, the average was 18.5 kilos. So that's barely more than the previous category, which is very interesting. And I will have a few comments to make on that very shortly. So that would be 40.7 pounds. The biggest outlier was 45 kilograms, which is crazy good. That would be 99 pounds. And the biggest low liar, the weakest person, was once again zero kilograms. So just body weight for five reps. In the advanced category, the average was right around 35 kilograms. That is 77 pounds. And the biggest outlier, the strongest person, was at 50 kilos. Okay, so 50 additional kilos or 110 pounds added to yourself and doing chin-ups that way for five reps. Pretty impressive. And then the biggest low liar, weakest person, was only at 12 additional kilos or 26.4 pounds for five reps. Now, chin-ups are interesting. So I think the reason why the difference between the first category and the second category, so the kind of look like they lift and the definitely look like they lift category, the reason why the difference there was so small, I think is because for one, I think with chin-ups there is a relatively quick learning curve or improvement curve initially. So I think when you go from beginner to early stage intermediate or so, you will first of all go through some pretty decent body recomposition. So often you will lose some fat and gain some muscle, which basically means that you're losing non-functional tissue and weight from your body, which is only hindering your chin-up performance. And you're also gaining some functional tissue on your body at the same time, on your lats and on your biceps, which are going to help your chin-up strength. So I think on chin-ups, you can make fairly decent improvements relatively quickly compared to some of the other lifts. But once you reach that kind of intermediate-ish stage, from then on, further improvements are just very, very hard. And I definitely do see that people that are in that intermediate, maybe late stage, intermediate stage, adding weight to their chin-ups is becoming harder and harder. And once you get to the advanced stage, even just adding a kilo is just going to be super hard. Another thing that I perhaps should address regarding chin-ups is why am I looking just the added weight and why not total weight? Because you might think that, okay, well, if someone weighs 70 kilos, then adding 30 kilos to their chin-up is one thing, but if you're weighing 100 kilos, and then you add 30 kilos to your chin-ups, then you're much stronger because you're lifting much more total weight. Interestingly, it just doesn't seem to be the case. So if I'm looking at the people, for example, in the advanced category, 
they have very different body weights at times. So there are people anywhere from 75 kilos all the way up to 100 kilos. And the added weight to their chin-ups is not all that different. And their level of muscularity is also pretty similar. In fact, if I'm looking at the people that I know that are the strongest on chin-ups just based on the added weight, they are actually fairly heavy, fairly tall people. So really, it really seems to be the case that it's enough to just look at the added weight and that will be just as informative regarding how muscular and how developed you're likely going to be as if we were to look at the total weight. Why that is the case? Honestly, I'm not quite sure. I was thinking about it and I, I just don't know. So I will have to ask some biomechanics wizard about that and hopefully they will be able to educate me. Okay, so with that, let's speed things up a little bit because I'm kind of going through this list very slowly. So Romanian deadlift, category one, the average was 107 kilograms. The biggest outlier was 130 kilograms for five reps, which is not bad. And the weakest person that I could find was at 70 kilograms for five reps. The definitely look like they lift category, the average was once again, 107 kilograms, which is interesting. But the biggest outlier here was 185 kilograms, which is very strong. And then the biggest low liar, the weakest person was once again, 70 kilograms. At the advanced category, the average, so the average was 193 kilograms. Okay, so there is a massive discrepancy here. The difference is almost double compared to the previous category, which they already look like they lift, so keep that in mind. But anyway, the biggest outlier here was 245 kilograms, so 539 pounds. And then the weakest person, the weakest person here was 170 kilograms, so 374 pounds. Now what you're seeing here, and you will see the same thing with the squat, is that there is a much bigger discrepancy here between advanced people and just solid intermediate, already looking like they lift, like good physique type people. And I think the reason behind that is simply priority. Like this survey was done with guys or this database collection was done with guys. And a lot of guys just don't start to train their lower body seriously up until several years into their training journey. So I think this is an artifact of that. And that's why in the advanced category, the weakest person is still very strong. You know, 170 kilos for five reps. I mean, that's not bad at all. And so this is not that far below the average, which is 193 kilos. Whereas in the first two categories, there is a much bigger difference between the weakest person and the strongest person, and also between the weakest or the strongest person and the average. So I think that's what you're seeing here. And then let's look at the squat. So the first category kind of look like they lift. Uh, average is 97 kilograms. So basically right around 100 kilos. The biggest outlier here was 120 kilos and the weakest person was 60 kilos. The definitely look like they lift category, the average was 111 kilograms. The biggest outlier was 157 kilograms and the weakest person was 50 kilograms. Okay, so weaker than in the previous category, which is once again interesting. Advanced category, the average was 163 kilos, which is pretty impressive. The biggest outlier was 180 kilos. And then the biggest low liar, so the weakest person was 136 kilos. So once again, this is what you're seeing here. Advanced people, at that point, you're serious about your lifting. So you're going to train everything seriously, upper body and lower body alike. And so that's why the weakest person is still stronger than the average of the they look like they lift category, for example. Okay, so basically these are our findings here. I'm going to put them up on the screen here once again for you to see, and I'm also gonna put them in the show description. And honestly, if I'm looking at these averages, I think they are pretty good, you know? So for example, with the bench press, if you can bench press 100 kilos for five reps, that's a solid performance. It's not freaky, it's not amazing. But at that point, I would say, yeah, most people will definitely look like they lift. And I think it's not a strength level that is outside of the realms of possibility for people with average-ish genetics. Some people will fall below this, some people will be much stronger than this when they just look like they lift. But I think kind of as an average value, it's pretty good. Same thing with the overhead press. 
honestly, I think if you can overhead press 50 kilos-ish for five reps, that's solid. Not amazing, of course, but if you can do that, like, yeah, you're probably going to have a decent-ish upper body. You know, like, that tells you a lot about how strong this whole shoulder complex is going to be, even your upper pecs to some extent, your triceps. So I think if you can reach 50 kilos for five reps, that's a, a very, very decent point to reach. And if you can do that with around 60 kilos-ish, that's very, very respectable. Once again, it's not going to get you the most views on YouTube or the most likes on Instagram. But I would say if you can get to that point, very, very good. And then if you can get anywhere near 80 kilos, so if you can be even as high as 70 kilos, but definitely in that 75 to 80 kilo range, I mean, you're a beast, you know? I know that there are people who can do that with 100 kilograms or even more, like Mike Isratel, for example, has some ridiculous overhead pressing strength from his earlier years when he was still overhead pressing. He posted it on Instagram not that long ago, but man, 80 kilos-ish or even 75 kilos for five reps, that's super impressive. If you can do that, you will have a jacked upper body. Like there is almost no two ways around that. Chin-ups, once again, a bit of an odd lift just because of that non-linear improvement curve that we talked about. I think if you can get to 10 extra kilos and do five reps that way, I think that's pretty solid. I think that's a very, very decent, not starting point, it's definitely more than a starting point, but you know, that's respectable. If you can get to around 20 kilos, that's a very, very solid performance level. You know, at that point, it's kind of like the point where, okay, so if your biceps are still severely lagging, even though you can do that, then yeah, probably you don't have the most amazing biceps genetics. But at that point, you will probably have a fairly well-developed pulling musculature complex, okay? So your rear delts, lats, biceps, like all of those things will be probably fairly well-developed. And if you can get over 30 kilos, that's like beast mode category. And of course, the higher, the better. Um, a lot of these guys that I asked with super impressive physiques, they were around 40 kilos often. Romanian deadlifts, honestly, I think uh, it's pretty spot on, the findings here. You know, 100 kilos for five reps at least, that should be very achievable for most people. The Romanian deadlift has just a very good overall absolute progression potential in it. So I think you should get there at least, and now we are talking. I think the next benchmark after that could be 130 kilos for five reps. I think that's doable by most people with not remarkable genetics. So I think that's a good goal to shoot for. And then if you can get over 160 kilos, I would say for five reps, I think that's something that should qualify you into the beast mode category. I know that the average here for the advanced people was almost 200 kilos on the Romanian deadlift, but I think even if you don't quite get there, you will be in the beast mode category, okay? So uh, then with the squat, yeah, I think 100 kilos once again for five reps, I think that should be doable for most people. How that's exactly going to look like is going to differ. Some people are going to go completely ass to grass. Some people might not quite as much, but I think that should be fairly achievable. 120 kilos for five reps, I think a very decent point to shoot for. And I think that's doable by most men with non-remarkable genetics once they get to a truly solid intermediate level. And then if you get to the beast mode category, then I would say that over 150 kilos, I think that's very respectable for five reps. I think, uh, once again, I know that the average here was higher than that, but I think if you get to 150 for five, I think that's fairly decent. So yeah, basically those were the strength standards that I would set on these lifts. Now, like I said in the beginning, I don't actually think that you have to have these lifts in your routine. A lot of my clients don't have the back squat or the barbell overhead press or the flat bench press in their programs and they're still making really good gains. I would say that my philosophy when it comes to strength standards or just thinking about strength in general is for one, like I said many times before, strength is very important. I prioritize it very, very highly. But my overall philosophy is that we have a certain set of exercises in your routine. Whatever that is, I want you to be a whole lot stronger than what you are currently a couple of months from now. Okay, so you don't have to do the flat barbell bench press. You can do a low incline bench press in the Smith machine. But if you're currently doing 70 kilos for eight reps, 
you know, sometime from now, you know, maybe like two months from now, ideally, I would like you to do 80 kilos for eight reps, I think I said. So basically, I wouldn't really look at absolute strength numbers as goals. I would just look at improving the lifts that you're currently doing and focusing on progressive overload. I would say that that's a very good thing to just strive for in general and just looking at getting better as opposed to chasing specific numbers. Because once again, just because you reach these specific numbers, it doesn't mean that you will look exactly like some other guy who has reached those numbers before. One thing I would say, which is kind of a funny anecdote or just thing to keep in mind is that I think once you reach a legitimate, solid, intermediate level of training development, training age, and also physique development, I think in most gyms, machines that are stack loaded, so not plate loaded, but you have the cable stack and you load it that way, I think you should be able to max out for at least a solid like eight reps. And that would apply to the lat pull down. I'm sure there are some gyms in which the weights go up to some crazy high level. But at this point, I can pretty much just walk into any gym, use their lat pull down, put it on the highest weight and do like, I don't know, 12 to 15 reps or something like that. So I would say that if you can do at least eight with most lat pull downs with the full stack, then I think you're doing well. Chest press machines, again, in most gyms, I'm sure there are some exceptions, but in most gyms, I think you should be able to max out the stack for around a set of eight. Leg extension machine, I think in most gyms, you should run into the problem that you have to do them single-legged because you can do the full stack for at least a set of 10 when you're doing it bilaterally. Some other machines are, are kind of more variable. So like leg curl machines, yeah, those kind of depend on the gym in my experience. Shoulder press machine, once again, if it's stack loaded, I think you should be able to max that out, um, you know, for a handful of reps at least, okay? So that's something kind of to keep in mind that uh, even if you don't do these specific lifts, there are some strength standards you can use even if you're just using machines. But anyway, guys, I hope this video was informative in some ways. It was way longer than I thought it was going to be, but um, I hope you learned some interesting stuff about strength standards and how to think about them. And in general, always keep in mind that strength and size correlate very, very well. So if you wanna get bigger, you will also have to get stronger. I don't care if you want to get stronger. I don't care if you believe in the strength and size relationship. I'm just telling you, it will have to happen. If you're gonna get bigger, you're going to get stronger one way or the other. And I can also look into my little crystal ball and tell you that if you're not getting stronger, then you're also not going to get bigger. That's just kind of how it is. But anyway, guys, thank you for your attention for today. Please check out the show description if you want to be coached and mentored by me or just want to do a consultation and talk with me for about an hour and uh, check out my Instagram and all the other good stuff as well. Besides that, please like, comment, uh, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Support this channel with those kind actions and otherwise uh, I will see you in the next video.